Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Taslima Maya Art. It's great to have you here. Do check out my other videos and tutorials and remember to like, share and subscribe if you can to help me grow my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create stunning jewellery by applying nail art transfers, foil decals and temporary tattoos on your acrylic paint skins similar to what I've done here. These beautiful pieces are pendants that I created using cabochons and pendant trays and I will do two demonstrations on how I created them, one using temporary tattoos or nail transfers and the other using nail foil transfers. Water decals are another option too and I will do a further video if requested on how to use those. The foreground of the trees in these pendants are actually nail art um, decals or transfers similar to temporary tattoos um, and I will show you how to do this in a moment. But here the background pour within these are actually from the runoff paints from a painting I did which is video number 35 which was the diptych landscape dump and swirl method that I did with the face silhouette. So this is the dried off or runoff paint from that painting that I used as a paint skin and embellished it using these um, nail art transfers. There are so many different types of designs and colours and nature um, that you can use um, and find online um, for nail art and apply them to your uh, jewellery making. In part one of this video tutorial, I'll be showing you the basic products that you will need to start creating your own jewellery with your acrylic paint skins. Now, if you've been fluid paint pouring for a while, you may have seen others making jewellery with paint skins, such as these. Or these. Or these. You can also create jewellery such as bracelets, earrings, pendants, hair clips or even magnets, um, as well as keychains or other types of products like bookmarks using your leftover paint drippings from your paint pouring. If you've ever wondered how to go about it, then I hope this video will help you get started. I will go through some of the products that you will need and the specific supplies that I personally use to create mine. To begin with jewellery making, you will need to get some basic supplies which can have an upfront cost attached. But some of these materials do last a long time and the products that you create can be quick and easy to make and easier to sell at craft markets, stores, festivals and other outlets and add value to your product lines. Selling a number of reasonably priced um, jewellery pieces or sets, for example, whether it's necklaces, earrings or bracelets, can quickly add up and contribute to your profit margin and it's more likely to be an easier purchase for a customer than a large high price tagged painting. Okay. Um, so what is a paint skin? How do you get one? Well, there are two main ways of creating paint skins. The first way is that paint, paint skins can be created from scratch deliberately by pouring leftover paint, uh, mixed paints for a technique you are doing, for example, onto a surface such as a silicon mat or parchment or freezer paper using a fluid art technique ranging from a straight pour, flip cup and tilting, swiping or blooming method then letting the paint dry and peeling it off the surface. This is my favourite way of ensuring I have beautiful intentional designs and colours for my skins. Alternatively, the second way is that paint skins can also form quite organically by keeping a silicon mat, parchment paper or other smooth surface directly beneath your fluid art workstation so that when you create artwork or your chosen substrate, any excess paint drips that off it falls onto the smooth surface area such as your mat and is left to dry for a few days. After a few days you can peel this dried flexible paint layer off the surface and use it as a skin for jewellery or even a bookmark for example to create a bookmark 
Um, so if the drippings are not that interesting, you can add further pouring paint whilst it's still wet and use a skewer to draw designs or patterns in the colours to make it more interesting. You can store the dry paint skins in a number of ways, ideally um, as flat as possible. So, for example, in a binder between poly pockets or document protectors, um, and you can stack these on top of each other, but you must put something in between them, like parchment paper or inside poly pockets, so that they don't stick together. Ideally, try not to use paint that's been mixed with silicon oil, though, um, because you'll have a hard time cleaning the silicon oil off and getting the glue to adhere properly to them while creating jewellery from them. So I'm not saying that it cannot be done, as you can easily wash paint skins, but it's better to be safe than sorry when creating a good product to sell, um, particularly if it's jewellery. So here is a list of things that you will need to get started. So one of the first things you will need is... Um, some glass cabochons. Okay, so glass cabochons come in many different um, varieties. Um, I have a number of different types. I have squares, um, rectangulars, um, circles and um, teardrops, for example, or heart-shaped ones. Um, so here's an example of a heart-shaped one that I've created. Oval ones, um, circular ones teardrop ones okay these are glass domes through which you see your design often magnified okay so it really shows off your design on your paint skin um, and I tend to use the 25 millimeter ones a lot though you're not restricted to these of course and you can go bigger or smaller you can purchase these from many online retailers such as Amazon or eBay or craft and jewelry making stores as well you also need something known as a pendant tray or bezel trays, um, such as these. And they do come in many different shapes and sizes corresponding to the carbochons. That fit inside them. OK, so, for example, if I took the round one, that would fit in most of these pendant trays. This one is actually a badge, um, so that would fit in there quite well as well. As you can see, um, the teardrop one would fit in this teardrop pendant tray. So, and there's a double-sided one. You can get many different designs. You can get turtles, dragonflies, uh, owls, all sorts of different designs for pendant trays, okay, which um, give it that bit of extra wow sometimes um so yeah you can get these from any online retailers such as amazon ebay or other types of jewelry making stores you will also need some diamond glaze such as this which is a water-based dimensional adhesive um and you will need to pop a needle in the top when you open it up so make sure that it's easy to um squeeze out the bottle you also need a glue okay so you can use clear gorilla glue or you can use this which is the one i use which is e6000 and this is industrial strength uh, clear glue multi-purpose adhesive and it's got a self-leveling formula in it it's waterproof flexible non-flammable and even paintable so I, I use this to glue my paint skins and cabochons into my pendant trays okay um, and then I wait for it to set. So the other thing you will need is possibly some plastic clamps. And these I've got from my local hardware store. Um, they're made in plastic. They're mini clamps. So I use these then. So that once I've glued my carbon and um, the, the design uh, acrylic paint skin into my um, pendant tray, I kind of put these on and I leave them for a while for them to set so that the glue dries. Um, and then I take them off and let them dry naturally. Uh, or cure naturally over 24 hours um, so yeah mini clamps are always very useful you will also need cords or chains to hang your pendants off and metal ones um, cord ones leather ones um, and other types of materials this is an example of one on this one you can get different colors um, you can get chains if you prefer this is a brown one here on a wooden um, pendant tray so you can buy lots of different types of those as well.
Um, if you are making magnets, you would need to have the magnet um, backs for the um, cabs that you're using as well. Um, now, this may sound like a lot of outlay in terms of upfront costs, but I'll be honest with you, it can be costly to begin with and it is an investment. But once you begin selling your products, um, you will make up the cost pretty quickly because um, they do kind of sell quite well. Um, and people do like making smaller purchases or rather than big purchases on, on big paintings. Um, and it does add up after a while. Okay. And very quickly, what I've got here is a number of different nail art um, foils and transfers, um, some on transparent backings um, and some temporary tattoos as well. You can get them very miniature so they fit within your um, paint skin and your um, pendant trays um, on top of your paint skins. Um, and you can also get water decals and things as well. This is more of a nail foil. Um, which is on a transparent backing, um, but I will show you how to use those. And here's some examples of pendants that I've created. Um, and again, you can get double-sided pendants um, and lots of different designs on the outside, different colours. Okay, so copper, silver, um, black, and lots of different colours you can get um, in terms of the pendant trays Okay, and designs. The thing I have here that I haven't shown you is Mod Podge dish, Dishwasher Safe um, Gloss. Okay, so it's a sealer and you can use this, for example, to attach clasps to the back of your um, carbachons. So once you've glued your paint skin on, you can attach a little clasp in the back um, so you can thread through a cord. Um, and keep it really simple so the back of it would be completely protected and waterproof if you put a fair bit of this on the back and, and paint that on okay and it also glues that um, piece on the back as well okay so you don't actually need to put it into a pendant tray but I will show you an example of that in the future in part two of this video, I will show you how to use nail art transfers and temporary tattoos to create jewellery on acrylic paint skins. I also have another video, jewellery making from paint pour skins, which is video number 29 on my channel, so do check that one out as well. Now what you see here is the excess paint that came off my painting and dried on a silicon mat. Um, and turned into a paint skin and it's really really thin you can see it's really easily um, movable um, it's lovely you know in terms of the colors and the texture on there um, it looks beautiful and these were some of the colors that I used for that particular painting painting number 35 on my channel um, and I thought I could use this really to create some pendants I'm going to be using a 25 millimeter carbachon, as you can see here, and this pendant tray to create this piece. So we have an array of things. They come in many different designs online, and there are many websites where you can get these very, very cheap. Um, these were from Amazon, um, and you can get all sorts of things depending on what you're looking for. So I use these to create jewelry rather than nail art. Um, so I have a lot of variety of patterns and designs. Um, and little butterflies like these, ferns, trees, leaves, um, all sorts of things really. Um, and then I also have these which are larger pieces. These obviously don't all fit in a cabochon, but I use them for um, decorating paint pores that I do on canvas and other substrates. Um, and they're very easy to put on and I'll show you in a minute how I put these on. I also have here, um, you can see quite a lot of um, these which are actually nail transfer foils. Okay, so these come off using a certain kind of glue on a nail normally, but I can show you another way that I do it. I have these which are paint skins. Um, and these were poured on a silicon mat um, and then what I do is I wait till they dry, peel it off the silicon mat, I get my cabochon, I place it on top, find an area of the pour that I really like, for example here or there, and then I glue it on using some diamond glaze.
Oh, my mum said glued it on. It's in diamond glaze. Um, I press it down for a few seconds and wait for that to dry. Then I cut it out with some scissors. Um, and then I place it into the pendant trays. Now there's lots of different designs for pendant trays and I've done a video really showing you the variety that I have. Um, you get double sided ones like this, um, you know, things like um, owls and, and different lizards and you know, all sorts of things um, that you can place the kiboshans into and make it look really, really beautiful and sell as pieces. Um, and I have other kind of paint drippings as well, which can be used. Certain areas of the paint drippings can be really attractive, um, very beautiful colours, you know. So, yeah, so there's lots of things you can do. You can place, um, for example, a blue butterfly on a pink background and then um, transfer that with water. Um, and then these, in terms of how you use these, I'll show you a little demo in a minute. Um, in terms of how to get them onto your paint skins as opposed to on your nails and what products I use. So we'll be doing that in a second and just want to show you the difference. So there are also another type of um, uh, art, uh, nail art, which is called um, water decals, okay, which you dip into water um, and then you extract the pattern um, from the paper backing and then you place it onto normally nail, but you can place it onto these paint skins, for example, um, and then cut them out you know afterwards once they dry and glue them right onto the kiboshans and as you can see you can create any kind of designs for your jewelry depending on what type of temporary tattoo nail transfer or foil design that you get some of my earlier pieces were a little bit boring i think um with just a paint skin but with embellishments added they just give it that added value Okay, so I'm right back now with you, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I've got this little tree that I've cut out, okay? And I'm hoping to put that in this kind of space here, um, and hope that it shows. So we're just going to peel off the front of that, um, the clear um, front, and I'm going to place it. Now, which way is the root and which way is the tree? So that's the root. So I'm going to place it somewhere on the pattern of this which I like so before I do that I just want to check what area of this paw I quite like I think up here would be quite nice because it's quite clear and I'll be able to see the tree hopefully okay so somewhere around here I think would be perfect yep so we're just going to get this tree now and I'm going to place it it's slightly fiddly because it's so small I'm going to place it this way around and just check again um, if that fits in the middle there where I want it and then once I've got it on there I'm going to push it down and here what I've got is a little bit of water in here on a paintbrush um, and I'm just going to add a little bit of water on the back of this just double check it's on properly and I'm going to brush a bit of water on the back just gently I don't want to oversaturate but I do want the paper to be wet um, without too much of it going onto the canvas and I'll wait a few seconds um, and then hope for the best with peeling it off okay so let's see what happens now I'm just gonna probably slide it off and see how that looks so there it is so you can see Really clearly, that would look beautiful um, in a pendant. So obviously it's still a bit wet at the moment. I might just dab it with a bit of tissue. I'll find a bit of tissue. Just dab it down and get that off. Get the water off it. And then I just want to show you what that looks like. Okay. Um, obviously it's still a bit wet, so probably shouldn't be doing that yet. But I'll wait for it to naturally air dry. And then I will get some diamond glaze, um, pop a bit on the back of this and then press it down quite firmly on here. Okay, obviously on, at the minute this is resting on a canvas, which is why it's bouncing around. I will put it on a firm, um, on a very firm flat surface um, and that will make it much easier. And then we're going to have a go at these as well um, and see how that works. So here you can see, I just got my hand underneath it. Hopefully you can see... And get the light 
what that looks like. It's really pretty. And I will show you the finished artifact as well, okay, when it's finished. Okay, so here I am. I'm going to cut up the next piece. Um, I'll do that so you can watch me. So I'm just cutting this little tree out, okay, um, very gently so I don't ruin any of the others on there. And then here it is. I'm just going to peel off the front. And there it is. Throw that away. And I'll pop this onto an area that I want to keep. So I'm going to do a double-sided um, pendant for this tree. So I just want a different area of this pull. Um, an area that's quite light, ideally. So I think maybe this one would be nice here. And maybe I'll just go up a little bit and put it here. Okay, so I've decided where I'm putting it. I'm just going to put this now um, onto here. Make sure that's on properly. And I'll just push it right down. And then again, I get my bit of water, a little brush, and just make sure it's So now I've got my diamond glaze and I'm going to use this on my kabocken. Um, I'm just going to make sure it's clean um, and clear. And I'm just going to pop some right in the middle. I think that's more than enough. Okay, now we're going to put it right here. So if I get closer to it. Okay, so then you get a pair of scissors and we start cutting this out. So I'm just going to go along this white line. I'm just going to very gently just cut around the two. Okay, so I'm going to wait for these to dry now, and after that I'm going to cut around them. So as you can see, I managed to create quite a few pieces out of this one paint skin. And I really do love how they turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments.
In part 3, I'll be showing you how to use these nail art foil decals on the transparent backing, as you can see here, um, and how you can transfer them onto your paint pores to create your jewellery. Now the difference with these type of decals that you see here, these foil decals um, with the patterns on a transparent backing, is that they need to be placed on your skin with a design side up, because on the back of them, it's just plain backs. So the designs are on the front, which means that we have to take a different approach to this. Now, with nail art, what's used is a product named Nail Art Foil Glue, which you can get in various different brands like this one. But it requires a UV LED lamp, usually. So I found a solution that works for me instead with things I have at home already. Now, what I use instead of that is just a regular clear top coat nail polish. And you can use any brand, really. I use the Maybelline one, um, as I'll show you in a second. So I take my paint skin, find um, a piece of this art, you know, this, this uh, foil that I like, cut mm. up the design as so. And then I make sure um, the paint skin is clean, place the design in a desired location, put my carbochon on top and make decisions as to where to place it. And then I quite simply take the paint skin and then use that um, nail polish, clear nail polish top coat and put a very thin layer of it across the top of my paint skin as so. And I make sure it is a very thin layer, um, so it is tacky. And then I let this dry um, for a while, but I try to let it dry until it's still slightly sticky. And I pop this um, pattern then on top of it, um, like so. And I pretty much rub it down, and I can use anything really to rub it down. Here I just use the back end of my tweezers. So here I'm making a decision to place it there. Um, I'm making sure it's on. Then I'm pushing it right in to the um, paint skin. And I'm rubbing it down so that transfer um, sits on that uh, nail polish um, layer I've got there. And as I said, the nail polish layer is still slightly tacky. So what I can then do is lift the top of the transfer off and leave the design on. Um, and in this instance, I, I do I have to do it a couple of times because I probably let the nail polish dry a little bit too much. But this is a trick I kind of picked up and how I do it. Um, there may be other alternative approaches or products that you can get. Um, I haven't tried those. This does work really well for me. So here I'm just double checking that the pattern has transferred onto the paint skin. And if it hasn't, I rub it down again and make sure it's properly on. And then I lift that plastic um, top coating off, as you can see, um, the plastic sheet. And what's left is the pattern on my paint skin. And then I go about just using the diamond glaze then just to um, put my mm -hmm. combustion back onto the whole thing. So to finish it off. Um, so that's the trick that I use. And hopefully this will be useful to you. Um, and something new that you may not have tried before would like to try but if you do try it do let me know in the comments it'd be great to hear from you it's just something that I discovered works for me um, and it's relatively easy to buy those transparent top coat nail polish it's it's really easy to do and as you can see here's the finished product and I really like it so I'm planning to do quite a few of these as you can see here's a butterfly on a really beautiful background um, I'll be doing others um, like this. So thank you again for joining me on the journey, learning something new, hopefully, and uh, experimenting a bit with products that we have, um, using things like decals, temporary tattoos, um, nail foils. Um, although we haven't tried water decals yet, but we have tried a couple of the others, and I've just hopefully shown you how to do this, um, and you'll be giving it a go too. So. Thanks again for joining me and I will see you hopefully on the next video. Do please stay on the acrylic crazy train with us today. Up next is Venom Fluid Art 
and then it's Creations by Christy, and then it's Shan B Fluid Art, and then Bubbles with Venom again, and finally Hippie Dippy Painter Man is our caboose. So stay with us and see you on the lives.